Now, <clears throat> I try to be a nice guy, right? I try to be respectful of everybody's opinion. I try not to be the mean guy I used to be a decade ago when I would, you know, call anybody a fucking idiot, okay? I don't. I try not to do these things, but there comes a time when I have to revert back to the mean guy, okay? When I start seeing stupid shit, when I start seeing people say stupid shit, I have to shut it down, okay? Anybody, anybody, listen, 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 everybody listen, listen, listen. Anybody who thinks that this Raptors team, not the 2001 Raptors team, okay, this Raptors team can beat the 98 Pacers is a fucking moron. Moron. At least when it comes to basketball. I don't know about any other aspects of your belief system, but or your beliefs as far as sports. But when it comes to this, you're a misguided moron. Look at the luminaries. Look at the luminaries that play for this team. Yes, you have DeMar DeRozan. Okay? Averaging 27.3 points per game. He's falling off a bit because at one point in time he was leading NBA scoring the first three weeks or month of the season. But he's falling off a bit, but he's still putting up 27 points per game. Kyle Lowry. Averaging 23 points per game. Okay. But let's look at some of these other guys. Damari Carroll, Patrick Patterson, Corey Joseph, Terrence Ross, Lucas Naguera, Dellen Wright, Norman Powell, Pascal Slockham, Jakim Polti, Jonas Valanciunas, Valanciunas, whatever the fuck his name is, Jared Sullinger, Fred Van Vliet, and Bruno Caboclo, or whoever the fuck he is, who's averaging a tremendous 0 0.4 points per game. I look at this team, right? And um, Giannis Valanciunas, looking at his numbers, he's decent. 12.4 points, 9.9 .9 rebounds per game. Okay. This individual was saying that Giannis could be just as good as Rick Smith. Rick Smith in today's basketball would be at least the second best, if not the best, center of the Eastern Conference. I got to put a guy like uh, I'm talking about, well, yeah, I have to put a guy like uh, Hassan Whiteside into perspective, okay. But, at least on the offensive end, Rick Smith would probably be the best center in the Eastern Conference. Yes, he only usually averaged between 17, 18, 19 points per game. But that's because he shared the basketball while he was playing with the Pacers with the likes of Reggie Miller. <coughs> Reggie Miller, Chuck Person. All right. I believe Ricky Pierce played there some years. Chris Mullen. There were other guys that could score the basketball. Jalen Rose. All these different guys on this team, you're not going to be putting up 20-something points per game. But he did have big games. He had multiple big games. Uh, in particular, I remember against Patrick Ewing, who's in the Hall of Fame. I don't see Giannis dropping 35 or 38 or 37 against Patrick Ewing. It's not going to fucking happen. I do see Patrick Ewing dropping 50, 44, 38, 47, 49 against this fucking club. All fucking day. I do see that. Also, this team, this Raptors team is so fucking good. You really think these guys are going to contend with the Davis boys up front? They will be pushing this soft-ass fucking team all fucking 
day long. Remember, this team doesn't have Bismarck Biombo anymore. Okay? He's in Orlando. Remember so many fucking games outside those games where Bismarck had that. Remember that playoff? Remember the playoffs last year, guys? You think I'm wrong? Remember the playoffs last year? Outside of those couple of games where Bismarck Biombo was beasting on the boards, he had a 26 rebound game, and another game, I think he had like 14 rebounds. Remember how Tristan Thompson looked like fucking Dennis Rodman against that front line? Imagine Dale Davis and Antonio Davis against that front line. Now without Bismarck Biombo, the poor man's the Kimmy Tumbo. They don't have him anymore. The Davis boys will be getting, I would say Dale will be getting in a series 14 points, 12 rebounds a game. Antonio, 16 points, 13 rebounds. But they'll be destroying this fucking team. Okay? Now, Chris Mullen was a diminished player by the time he went to the Pacers. He wasn't the same guy. Injuries had taken a toll on his legs. He was more of a spot-up guy. But this is another thing. This Raptors team has no outside shooting outside of Lowry. Carroll could hit him. I'm I'm not seeing a lot of knockdown shooters. They had historic three point shooters in Chris Mullen, and the great legendary Reggie Miller. Plus, you had other guys in that team that could knock down threes. Because as good as DeRozan is, he's more of a mid range jump shooter. Doesn't have really much of an outside shot. And I'm gonna tell you something else too. You said something about this guy I'm talking about, this idiot. He was saying that, well, Mark Jackson and Reggie Miller wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to check DeRozan and Lowry. Well, I will admit that Lowry's speedy. Mark Jackson wasn't the fastest guy. But you know how you slow down players like that? Make him work on offense. And you see Mark Jackson? You notice Mark Jackson's, you know, he's not the tallest guy, but he's filled out over the years as announced. You see, he's a pretty big guy. His brother, his brother who uh, passed away a couple years ago, um, name slips my mind for right now. Uh, what was his brother's name? Um, the N one player, I think it was. Um, Escalade. He was like six, six, seven hundred pounds. Mark Jackson, I would say right now he's probably walking around two thirty, maybe two forty. Mark Jackson was a big guy who had a post game. Mark Jackson would be posting Kyrie Lowry's little ass up, posting his ass up, posting his ass up, scoring, posting his little ass up, posting his little ass, little ass up, scoring. When they got the defense got tired of that shit, when the, when the the Raptors said, okay, we got to contain this shit. One of the game's premier passers, Mark Jackson, kicking out to Reggie Miller, kicking it out to Chris Mullen, kicking it to Jalen Rose for an eighteen foot jump off glass, kicking it to Rick Smith. Who's going to check Rick Smith? Giannis. He's going to contain him because Rick Smith just scored down low and he had the jumper. One of the sweetest jumpers I've seen on a seven foot four big man. Next to probably the great Yao Ming. Come on, man. Who you think you're talking to? And then you talk about Reggie Miller. He can't check DeMar DeRozan. Reggie Miller couldn't create his own shot like DeMar DeRozan. He couldn't. He can't. We'll live with that. You see, the, like Cleveland did, we'll live with those guys shooting. But I'll tell you what will happen. DeMar DeRozan won't get the type of shot that he's used to, that he wants, because we're going to force him to shoot outside. Where he's only, according to this year, only a 25% three-point shooter. We'll live with that. We'll live with him knocking out one, one out of four from downtown. We'll make Lowry beat us. Lowry going to have to score 30, 35 a game to beat us. He's not going to do that. But I tell you what, Reggie Miller will run all fucking day. 
run all fucking day in a series because he can keep it up. Even when Reggie got older, he could do it. But when he was younger, oh, my God, all fucking game, he's running, going through screens, running to get a sucking shot. They didn't take much for Reggie to get a shot off. Game one, DeRozan will be okay. Game two, he's a little bit, you know, he's still all right. But by the fourth and fifth game of the series, he's done. He's tired. He's like, oh, my fucking God. I'm getting tired of chasing this fucking guy. And by that time, the Pacers have a 3-1 lead. Reggie's knocking down threes and like look at him like DeRozan. They said, you were great, man. Why you only got 14 points on 5 or 16 shooting? You're tired? Hell, I'm just getting started. <laughs> knocking down threes, talking shit to him. And this Pacer team was tough, nasty. A whole different era. Whole different era. Talking shit. Getting under everybody's skin. The psychological aspect of it? Oh, no. You can't fuck with this team. Headed by the, the greatest trash talk of all time, Larry Bird. Rick Carlisle was a fucking assistant coach. Rick Carlisle, who's arguably the greatest coach in Mavericks history. Arguably. And he was an assistant to Larry Bird. Had an excellent coaching staff. Assistant coaching staff. This Pacer team was nasty. They almost dethroned the Chicago Bulls. And you really think this team would beat the, the Raptors? You, sir, are an imbecile. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. Um, you said something about that Knicks team uh, beat the Pacers in 99, only had one star. Well, let me tell you something. That team had Marcus Camby, okay, who, if I remember correctly, was a defensive player of the year winner later in his career, all right? Was was a candidate for Rookie of the Year in '97, I believe he was. All right, that team had a Trail Sprewell, who I think was the best team. No, no, not just me. Most Knicks fans will tell you it wasn't Larry uh, Allen Houston was the best player on the team. It was Latrell Sprewell. And I'm gonna tell you the difference of errors too, my moronic friend, my imbecile, my thimble-brained uh, opponent, DeRozan who's more of a jump shooter. I think we all say that, right? He's a jump shooter. He shoots 8.6 free throws per game. Latrell Sprewell, in 97, he averaged 24.2 points per game, was a slasher, a penetrator. Now, the, the, the Cardinal rule would be like, you would think a guy like that would be shooting, well, if DeRozan only shot 8.6 free throws per game, well, Sprewell had to have shot 10, 11 free throws per game? No. 7.3. You see, the rule changes favor perimeter players now. You guys get a lot of gift free throws that you wouldn't have back then. That's why I remember a game in 96, I believe it was. 96 or 97, where Kim Olajuwon, I think it was 96. Kim Olajuwon had 48 points, right? Didn't shoot a free throw. 24-40 shooting from the field. Did not attempt a free throw. Do you think in today's basketball, Akeem Olajuwon wouldn't have had at least 60 points? But getting back to the point, the New York, that Knicks team had Marcus Camby, who would go on to be, uh, I believe, a defensive player of the year when they're leading in being blocks, I think, at least one season. I think he did it twice. But I know he did it one season. All right? They had Larry Johnson, who was the 92 rookie of the year. Back injuries was what derailed his career, but Larry Johnson would have been a Hall of Famer. They had Allen Houston, Latrell Sprewell. And that team, with those stars, was no slouch. And yes, that team would most certainly beat this Raptors team, for the same reasons that I've given. Because you guys have nobody who would check Latrell Sprewell. The Rosen don't have the quickest to check Latrell Sprewell. Latrell Sprewell was the only reason why they won one game of that series in 99 against that Spurs team. At least they made it to the finals. See, what I don't like about you 
I'm gonna tell you what I don't like about you. You're trying to sit up there and, and, and insinuate that this era is better than, than the era of the past. And it's not. Okay? It's fucking not. Now, that, now this Cleveland Cavaliers team would certainly beat that Knicks team. And they probably would beat this pace, uh, that Pacers team. But I'm not certain about that. But I think when you got LeBron James and Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love, I think that gives you an advantage. Okay? To the point where I think they probably would beat that Pacers team. See, I'm fair. I'm fair. People call me a fanboy, a Jordan fanboy, but I'm fair. I'll admit when I think a certain team will beat another team. But you, you sir, are a revisionist historian. There's no fucking way that the Raptors who never sniffed an NBA Finals, and more than not, laid an egg in the Eastern Conference Finals, looked horrible against Cleveland in the first two games, did win games three and four, I believe, when Bismarck Biombo finally fucking came alive, and Lowry and DeRozan and DeMar Carroll knocked down some shots finally. But game five and game six, once again, late in the air, got blown out. Remember in the playoffs, there were so many epic blowouts. Well, so many of them came courtesy of Cleveland ainly raping, thrusting their member deep within <laughs> the vaginal orifice because that's how they played of the Toronto Raptors. They played like a bunch of pussies and they got fucked by Cleveland. Clean fight. Shake hands and come out fighting. Uh, don't take this ass whipping personally. 